So I definitely need a damper. I knew that from the beginning. I just wanted to do a few test burns first. So now what I need to do is add a damper somewhere in this area and I'll show you how I do that. Ductwork is rarely, if ever, completely round. It's more of a, an oblong shape with the flattest part being where the seam is. What I'm going to do is take yet another piece of this extra duct comes in so handy and trace out the outline of the duct. I'm going to flatten this out a little bit, make it easier to work with. There we go. Plop it on and outline it. Obviously this is the outside diameter that I've just traced. So I'm going to cut it smaller than what that circle is. Here you can see I've cut it out. It's my understanding that a damper is supposed to be considerably smaller than the inside diameter of the pipe. And that's so that you don't completely choke out the air. So I think I'm going to have to trim it a bit, but the shape is there. So there we go, I think that's better. Let's say there's about uh, three-eighths of an inch clearance all the way around. So now that the damper plate is cut out, what I've done is I've taken a four inch screw, fully threaded. It doesn't have to be fully threaded, but this one is. It's just what I had laying around. Put that in about the center and I marked out where this damper plate will be in relation to the fastener. So basically like this. I made sure that it was centered, I measured, and then drew a line like this, like this, like this, like this. That basically is going to give me a guide as to where to attach the damper plate to that screw. Take the damper plate, drill two holes that allow for the fastener to be threaded through but not fit through loosely, and cut it into a boat just a bit past the hole there like you can see. What I'm going to do is thread one end through like that and bend it. See what I did there? I'm going to keep threading it. Well, actually, you know what? I just had an idea. Do the same on the other side. Thread it through a bit. Bend it. Now thread it through all the way. good if it takes a little bit of effort to thread through. That's a good thing. There we are. That's snug. We can make sure that it's even snugger after it's installed. We can bend these tabs down and that will help make a bit more of a friction fit. But you can see this is the action we're looking for right here. Just so I can show you more clearly what I did, I took the first outlet that I mangled and installed it on here. Don't worry about the details, I'm going to show you how to do that when I actually install it on this piece, but I just want to show you this for now. There's my 4 inch fastener with full threads. Put a washer there. The holes that I drilled through this piece are the same size as these holes. So the screw actually has to thread through, so it's got some resistance, which is good because this isn't a balanced damper and we don't want it to be flapping and flipping around in there. We want it to stay in place after we move it somewhere. So I put the screw in, I held this in place, threaded it through, went through this wall as well. Then what I have over here, that's, those aren't tightened yet, but they'll be tightened upon each other. That's a, another double nut system that will keep it in place. It's probably not even necessary to have there, but I'm going to put one there. And I also have this wing nut that's tightened up against this single nut right here. And what that does is allow me to have a handle. And there's the damper action right there. 
So we've seen what it looks like in this model. I'm not going to put it in the same place though. It's actually going to be put right here. And to do that, I'm going to mark out where the centers are. Where it will bisect this pipe. You could use some calipers or verniers, I'm not sure. I think it would be calipers in this case. You could use calipers, but I'm going to eyeball it because there's quite a margin for error that's allowable here. So right there. And right there on the opposite side. Let me just look a few times to make sure that's where I feel it is. Change this one a little bit. Just use my human calipers here. Uh, yeah, that feels right. Okay. Since this is already on, it's going to be a little bit harder to push back into shape if I distort this metal in any way. So I'm going to really take my time when I drill this. This drill bit is actually quite sharp, so that will help. Still walks though. You can see it walking there. So we drilled through both sides without a problem. Got a hole on this side, hole on this side. Now I'm going to thread the fastener through the screw and once I get to a certain point which is right there I'm going to lower this and thread it through like that just as such there's a reason I'm going in from this side and I'll talk about that in a sec let me get it threaded through so I'm just using my fingers to thread this through See, I'm entering the second tab here. I don't know if I'll be able to use my fingers or not. Yeah, I have been. So there's some resistance, which is perfect. I'm going to have to use a screwdriver. I like resistance. That means the damper is going to stay in place. The damper plate, rather. It's not going to spin freely. So let's check how centered the damper is. You know what? That looks like it's going to work, guys. So... That looks about right. Just gonna scrape there. Okay, it might have to go this way. Probably gonna have to go that way because remember I showed you that most ductwork is a certain strange shape. So once I feel that my duct, my damper plate rather, is in the right position, I don't want it to spin anymore. I'm gonna hold it while I thread the rest through. <laughs> might be a little tricky. I feel kind of like swearing right now, but that's it's okay. I'm going to hold it still. I'm still threading it through. I want it so that the fastener head is almost threaded entirely so that it's touching the face of the elbow, but not exactly, so that there's a little bit of room left. Perfect. That's exactly where we want it. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do on this edge here. Let me get a better angle. So when you're standing at the front of the stove, this is the right hand. And I'm going to put the handle on this side because I'm a right-handed guy. And I want to be able to access it quite easily with my right hand, obviously. So, let's put the double nut on. Spin that on. Not quite all the way. There's about one thread showing. What I want to do here is tighten these two on each other. This whole double nut system right here. So I want to go get some tools and tighten those on to each other. Give me one sec. And 
Just snug that. It doesn't have to be that tight, guys. It's not going anywhere. I just want it to be more of a, a visual aid for me to not thread it too far one way or the other. It's basically a stopper. Now, for my handle. Put this first nut on. And I'll tighten this wing nut against it. So this one I can actually get my crescent wrench on. Hold it in place. Tighten my crescent wrench properly, hold it in place and give it a crank. There we go. Let me show you how I tighten the wing nut. I told you it was a double nut system, so I have a regular style nut there and then a wing nut pressed up against it, tightened. And I position the wing nut so that it indicates to me what the damper plate is doing inside. So right now, the wing nut is positioned 90 degrees to the earth, perpendicular to the earth, as is the damper plate. Now it's horizontal to the earth, as is the wing nut. Just like that. I've marked this with some Sharpie. After I paint all this, I'll probably put some paint on this so I know which face that I want to see when I'm operating the damper. I don't want to over tighten it or over screw it. I want to keep it in this quarter revolution space right there. So I'll just mark it out with some paint so that I always know that I'm looking at the correct side. So there we go. We have a damper.